many, many people ask questions about, you know, I don't know what I'm here for. I know that there's something more that I'd like to do, but I just feel stuck. I want to find something that I'm gonna, going to do. Like, uh, you know, I want to be a florist, or I want to raise horses out in Montana, or, you know, so, something that they're looking for, um, which is, to me, um, erroneous. It's not, it's not the way to go with this. That if you just take a look at the, uh, at the way that we are raised, in, in, in our society, especially in the Western world. But it's, it's literally true all over the planet. That um, we come into this world and we're really, you know, I often say that the first nine months of your life, you know, the, from the moment of your conception until, until your birth, until you plop out, uh, you're not doing anything. Um, everything, you're just being done. Everything is happening. It's, uh, you know, you don't have to worry about whether things show up on time or whatever. It's all, you know, the context is, uh, is uh, there's a greater force taking care of everything. And then we come into this world, we show up, our, our nose is in the right place, our arms are in the right place, everything is, you know, it's like we had nothing absolutely to do with it. We surrendered to it, we let it go, we let it happen. And then um, we're surrounded by all of these people in our lives that call our parents, our family, our culture, our religions, our schools, our business, all of this stuff. It's just it's like we get inundated with it. And essentially what we're taught is uh, that who you are is uh, not something that you can you can just surrender to and just trust, that um, you, you are now about to embark on a, a journey called ambition. And this journey of ambition is to, uh, it's almost as if you say, nice work, God, you did a great job, beautiful little thing, uh, we'll take over from here. <laughs> and the minute that we start taking over, we have our parents and our culture and all of us start taking over, we have let go of the surrendering process, which is what we had to do in the first nine months of our life. We just surrendered, we just let go, our mothers and whatever, every, everything just sort of you know, evolves perfectly. The assumption that I have behind that is that that isn't just true in the physical, you know, the physical realm, the physical aspect of ourselves. Like nobody uh, out there gets to decide how tall they're going to be, what color their hair is going to be, you know, when things are going to happen, when the hair is going to fall out, if it's going to, if it's going to change color, you know, and, and so on. All of that is just handled for us. We just surrender to that and we accept the body that we get and so on. I've often felt that uh, if if there's a future pull from a tiny little microscopic dot that allows everything in our physical journey to be um, perfect uh, and what it's going to be, to live however long it's going to live and then to die and so on, that uh, it's not too great a stretch to assume that, that all of the things that we think about and uh, our emotions and our purpose and what we're here to do and all of, all of that, if we were to figure out a way to live the way we did the first nine months of our life, just to surrender, just to allow, just to, be, to become the observer, to notice whatever it is that is taking place and just say, oh, isn't that nice? His eyes are going to be this cape or they're going to be that. And you don't get to do anything about that. It's just, uh, you know, it's all handled for us by this great grand source or God or spirit or soul or whatever you want to call it. So what happens is that we, we take on and we develop this thing that's called an ego. And this ego is, uh, you know, we, we say, I say facetiously, it's, it's edging God out, E-G-O. You know, like we, we trusted God, we trusted in whatever this source is, we trusted in the Tao, whatever you want to call it, we trust and trust it. Now we come here and we say, okay, now we'll just edge you out. And we take on this ego. And this ego is this huge thing that we learn that is almost all about ambition. Who you are now gets defined, first of all, by uh, what you have. And so you start having an ambition about from very early in your life. It starts with your toys and the stuff that is yours and so on. And, and then it goes to your, you know, your various possessions and your bank account and all of this kind of thing. So in the, uh, you know, the, at the very beginning in this ambition stage, you are taught that you are what you have, what you accumulate, what you collect, what you get to, uh, what you own, and it's yours. And therefore the lessons become uh, the more that I have, the better person that I am. And so, and the more, imp and the more valuable the stuff that I have is, the more that it costs, uh, is even, makes me even more 
important or more, much better than, as we say over here in Hawaii, more better. We're more better. <laughs> um, <laughs> do they? <laughs> so, um, so we spend a lot of our energy, a lot of our time, a lot of our, our, our work and, and, and our thoughts on uh, how much stuff can I get, how much can I accumulate. And the problem that comes up with this is that if you believe that you are what you have, if you really believe that, uh, and that's pretty much what we're taught, then when you don't have, or when, it, or when you lose it, or when it's taken away from you, or when it gets old, or when someone steals it, or whatever it might be, whatever this stuff is that you have, uh, and that's who you are, and it's, it's no longer there, and what we learn when we study the Tao is that's, that everything is cyclical. You know, things come in and then they leave. Things come in and, and it's true in our lives as well. There are periods of great affluence and great abundance. The stuff will come into our life and then it will d dissolve and disappear and go someplace else and then something else will. And, and, you know, the cyclical nature of everything in the universe is that it's up and then it's down and that the built into every storm is calmness and so on. So, um, so we have a, uh, you know, al almost like a dilemma. If I am what I have, then when I don't, I'm not. Um, I start to get, I, I start to get really terrified. I start to get really scared when I, when I don't have as much stuff as I want to have, or when other people have more stuff. So we spend a lot of our energy comparing ourselves to what other people have, and so on. So that's the first lesson of the ego. Another aspect of what we learn in this ambition stage of our life is that. Um, the ego says, I am not only what I have, but I am what I do. So now it's all about achievement. And this is really huge in the whole ambition thing. So that um, the more that I do, the more that I achieve, the more awards that I get, the, the higher that I go on my, uh, my educational pursuits, the more degrees that I have, um, all of these kinds of things, uh, getting ahead of the next guy, uh, the whole, whole corporate ladder business, you know, that we that we, we train young children in school, and we train them in in our schools also. We train them, you know, that uh, what you do is, uh, you know, uh, you you have to compare yourself to how other people are doing. So you're in a classroom of 30 kids, and there's the ones who do the best on the on their exams and so on get their gold stars and when they're in the early grades and they get them all posted on the board and when they get a little bit higher they get into the National Honor Society and they have and, and they get more awards and so on and there's this continuous emphasis on becoming more and more and more ambitious in your life and, and uh, not only accumulating a lot of stuff but uh, getting a lot of merit badges. Uh, behind you, and these merit badges, you know, come in the form of trophies, and they come in the form of uh, all kinds of award letters and, and things like this. The problem with this for all of us is that if you are what you do, then when you don't, you aren't. So if you now can't, let's say you have an accident and you get hurt, or um, you know, uh, you get dismissed from the job that you're in, or somebody else gets it and you don't. I mean, there's an endless number of possibilities, all of which everybody watching has experienced in their life at one time or another, that you get to do and then you don't get to do and so on. And one of the real problems in our society is that people get to a certain age and they can't do at the same level as someone younger than them is able to do. Then that's when they have thoughts of depression, and anxiety and worry and fear and they go off to you know they, they find themselves swallowing uh, a lot of medication and so on just to deal with that and suicide rates go really go way up uh, as people get into the 50s and 60s and realize that uh, they can't do what somebody else behind them is doing or that you get left behind you know it's like uh, there's so many ch changes and so many things that go on you know like I remember records being you know like 78s you know i don't know if you remember 78s but uh, you know these like these things that you would put it on there and you would play it and scratch and all of that and and then they tossed out 78s and they brought in 45s and then they got rid of the 45s and they started bringing in cassette tapes and then they got rid of those and they started doing things on digital which i haven't got a clue of what a digital thing is and how it works and how a little thing this big can have 10,000 songs in it doesn't that still it's a total mystery to me and they all come up